Nuclear fusion breakthroughs have been coming thick and fast in the past few months. Here's the latest one. The UK-based Joint European Taurus Laboratory has broken its own world record for the largest amount of energy extracted from a nuclear fusion reaction, according to the BBC, more than doubling the previous record set in 1997. The experiment was able to generate 59 megajoules of heat over 5 seconds by fusing two isotopes of hydrogen, known as deuterium and tritium, to form helium gas. Though this is only about enough energy to boil 60 kettles worth of water, Mark Wenman, a reader in nuclear materials at Imperial College London, told The Guardian, it operated as proof of concept. Five seconds doesn't sound like much, but if you can burn it for five seconds, presumably you could keep it stable and keep it burning for many minutes, hours, or days, he said. Adding to this, the BBC explains that, crucially, the record validates design choices at the larger International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor being built in France. The massive ITER facility is supported by a number of governments across the world, including EU member states, the US, China and Russia, and is hoped to be the final step in proving nuclear fusion can become a reliable energy provider in the second half of this century. According to its CEO, if the joint European Taurus Laboratories experiments hadn't proved successful, there would have been major doubts about the chances of success at the ITER, so the new record represents a relief for many involved in both projects. Broadly, fusion reactions mimic the process by which energy is created within stars, fusing together atomic nuclei rather than splitting them as in nuclear fission reactions that drive existing nuclear plants. As a result, nuclear fusion is seen by many as the great hope for a future of clean energy production because it does not produce greenhouse gases and the very small amounts of radioactive waste it produces do not last for a long time. Doubts around its viability persist, though, because the huge gravitational pressures which facilitate fusion reactions in the core of stars cannot be reproduced on Earth, which means temperatures for generating the reactions must be prohibitively high to make up the difference. And sourcing fuel is another potential stumbling block, as while deuterium is abundant in seawater, tritium is extremely rare, according to The Guardian. One solution of the second problem is that the future fusion plants such as the ITER plan to make their own tritium fuel by using high-energy neutrons released when deuterium and tritium fuse to split the common metal lithium into tritium and helium. One solution to the first problem is trapping superheated gas or plasma inside a donut-shaped magnetic field, and in this area, China's tokamak fusion reactor has just made a major breakthrough. Nuclear fusion breakthroughs have been coming thick and fast in the past few months. Here's the latest one. China's $1 trillion experimental advanced superconducting tokamak fusion reactor has superheated a loop of plasma to 70 million degrees Celsius, or five times hotter than the sun, for a new record of just over 17 minutes, according to Live Science, breaking the previous record of 390 seconds set by France's Tor Supra tokamak in 2003. Nuclear fusion involves using extremely high pressures and temperatures to induce collisions between hydrogen atoms to make helium, which sees matter converted into light and heat. This process is at the heart of how stars are fueled, and mimicking it is extremely desirable because it does not generate greenhouse gases or nuclear waste. One key difficulty, though, is that fusion reactors cannot recreate the same intense pressure for the reactions as stars, and thus must operate at much higher temperatures. Controlling plasma at these temperatures so it doesn't burn through reactor walls either with lasers or magnetic fields is extremely problematic technically, and as such, New Atlas clarifies that rather than fusion, the latest experiment tested the Chinese tokamak's ability to tolerate such high temperatures over long periods, sustaining superheated plasma similar to the kind that will eventually be used to create fusion, but for now generating much less energy output than goes into it. Live Science explains that the Chinese device is ultimately being used to test out technologies for what is currently the world's largest fusion project, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in France, which is expected to come online in 2025. Nevertheless, its progress remains impressive. The new record, announced on December 31st, adds to a previous record set in May, when the same device reached a record plasma temperature of 120 million degrees Celsius for 101 seconds, which was unprecedented. Of course, in the world of fusion development, this is the tip of the iceberg. As different projects around the world move forward, doubts persist about whether fusion will ever really be possible, and major creative solutions will be required if it is ever to genuinely get off the ground. 
One Zero explains, for instance, that even if the technology does continue to develop as hoped, there are significant upcoming issues with sourcing the two types of hydrogen that fusion relies on, with deuterium found in seawater but tritium extremely rare on Earth. The solution in that case might be that scientists could eventually use the helium-3 isotope as an alternative fuel, mining it either from the moon or asteroids out in space, but it's easy to see why people have their doubts. The only possible reason to consider spending so much time, money, and human effort on something so difficult is that potential benefits of success are just so massive. For perspective, experts suggest just one liter of seawater could produce the energy equivalent of two barrels of gasoline if fusion reactors can be made to work. Alongside this, as mentioned above, fusion reactors generate almost no waste, and any waste they do produce can be recycled into raw material for new reactions. The other 99% of material produced by fusion reactions is hot steam that converts into electricity via the use of turbines, becoming clean water once it cools off. If that's not enough for you, in the event of any malfunction, the ultra-hot plasma generated simply expands and cools off, turning into its harmless gas form, according to 1-0, which adds that even in the case of a leak mid-reaction, the plasma disperses into the atmosphere, which causes no harm thanks to dilution. So obviously, it might never happen, but with such large rewards, the pursuit is not some whimsical science project. It's about completely transforming human society. Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology working with a newly formed private company say they will build a working fusion power plant in 15 years thanks to a new superconducting material that recently became commercially available. The material is a new superconducting steel tape coated with a yttrium barium copper oxide. The team, working with MIT spin-off Commonwealth Fusion Systems, plans to use the tape to make smaller, more powerful magnets that can be used in fusion reactors. The new magnets will double the magnetic field of a fusion reactor, which means more power can be produced with a smaller device. The smaller size will reduce costs and complexity, making future fusion power plants easier to construct. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.